whatever's back here in this hallway can hear us talking about it. Is there anything in Steve's museum that is considered to be dangerous? If there's something dangerous, can you set off one of those devices? Move the ball or set off the REM pod? Oh, there goes the ball. I just caught it. Are you moving that ball down there? Yeah. Yeah. This is a path between both museums. So you got see his them? room here, which you see has all these artifacts, caskets, bed from Eloise Psychiatric Hospital, wicker cooling casket. Ah! Ooh. I swear, I swear that was not me. I'm clear right here. Holy hell. I had a feeling about Did that, you? man. I yeah. had a feeling. So this is, what, the fifth time we've tried to film here at the Sanford School? I mean, it just seems like every single time that we try and film here, it's either the camera cards get corrupted, we lose all the footage, we had a hard drive that crashed with the footage on it. Yeah. It just seems like every time we try and film this episode, it's like it's not meant to be, but I, we're gonna do it this time. Yeah. Because all the times that we've been here, as weird as it is to say, because not many people believe that an old elementary school is actually haunted, but as many times as we've been here, this is probably one of the most active places that I think we've, we've ever been. Yeah. And we've all had our own experiences here, so I think before yeah. we get started with the investigation, what we need to do is go around the building, and I think we should actually talk about some of the stuff that we've had happen here, because we've all, all four of us, yeah. had experiences here. But right up here, I think, is where we uh, had that experience with the REM pod when we were trying to make communication with uh, Miss Sanford. Miss Sanford was the first principal of what was originally the Third Street School. Over the course of time, she was forced to retire. And in the 1950s, when they added on multiple sections of the school, uh, the school was rededicated in her name, uh, basically, the Sanford, uh, the Sanford School. Actually, there's been multiple teams who believe they've actually made contact with her when we were together investigating, as you recall, using the REM pod in the side hallway. We asked Ms. Sanford, are you here? The REM pod went off, stayed on until we asked Ms. Sanford, could you back away from it so we know that it's you? And the REM pod was left silent. Now, I don't know about you, but this stairwell has always bugged me for some reason. It's always made me feel uneasy. It's always made me feel a little bit apprehensive. A lot of the people who actually investigated here, we do some public events, private events, like paranormal tour stuff, um, have uh, definitely made remarks about this back stairwell. I felt like really troublesome type of energy here, threatened and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that did happen here, one of our uh, former employees, he was a, uh, I guess you can say like a custodian maintenance guy, his name was Teddy. Um, he uh, reported seeing a full, like, three-dimensional shadow coming up the stairwell towards the second floor. Yeah, and that uncomfortable energy is not just here in this stairwell. It extends back into this hallway back here, which we've had a lot of experiences back Absolutely. there. And it's like a pathway. And I don't know why there's this negative, almost uh, threatening energy that seems to permeate this space. But, you know, coming in here, you can feel it. No. 
and there it is. There's that uneasy feeling. Yeah, always watched. As soon as as soon as we walk in here, you can yeah. feel that energy, even with the lights on. Yeah, this whole back hallway, and then down the uh, side hallway to to our left. It's just this area to me. Just it's just straight out creepy. So basically this hallway, I'm sure we would all agree, is probably one of the creepiest, like intense areas of this building. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have countless reports of people feeling followed, watched, footsteps, weird sounds, bangs, different things like that. Um, Jason yeah. saw right here on this corner here, that little nook leads back to the janitor's room which is always locked. And like he said, he saw a shadow come out of it and he was right around the corner here. There's a, a single door goes under the gym, which is right behind my back here. And made a sound, kind of made like a hissing sound or something, if I remember well, correctly. We actually have that clip of us describing what okay, happened cool. so we can show that to him. We're recording on phone right now because we had a really creepy experience as we were walking through getting ready. We were pulling some pranks on each other and Dave happened to be hiding to scare us. Now we heard him, he shut that door over here to the gymnasium. He shut this door over here on us to make us think he was, you know, to make yeah. us think it was something paranormal, which we kind of knew it was him. Okay, so here, I'll just do what I did. They were in the middle of the floor inside. Yeah, we were in the gymnasium here, which is on the other side of this door. So I just went like this. For a And I thought that you knew it was a joke. So then I came over here. I was just waiting right here, but then I got kind of freaked out, so I moved down here. And then I heard you guys coming out of there. Because at this point, I was at the far end of the hallway, so I can verify that I did see him standing here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, you did see him standing I was going to try to scare him, but I had a sporting plastic bag, so I defeated the purpose. So then I saw you stand there, so I just went, like that, and came back around, and then I was standing here. So he was standing right there the whole time. Now Jason and I, when we heard him make that noise with his mouth there that you just heard. Yeah, because, but see, because the first noise we heard, was that it? Because did you do it twice, once quieter and once louder? Yes. No, I just said it once. You only made one noise at all. Oh, really? And that was the loud, bah! Okay. So when we first walked out here, yeah. And you and I both heard something right in this alcove. Right. It was almost similar to the voice you made, but just quieter, like, mm -hmm. ruffled, or whatever it was. That was not you. You only made one noise. One time. I heard it once. That is f***ing creepy, man. And then the same time he makes a loud noise, you and I both see movement right here in this door, shadow movement. When he was on the other side of that corner at the end of the so hallway down here. What you're saying is it basically mimicked what he did. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Before he did it, though. Oh, that was before he did the, you did the second one that they heard. He did the second one. Yeah. Okay. So we heard it. Now, the weird thing is, the weird thing is we heard the first one from this little alcove, and we played dumb. Jason and I started walking because we thought he was back here in this corner. Jason and I played dumb. We started walking down this way just to be stupid. And then Dave did the loud noise, and when we came back here, as soon as he did the loud noise, we both turned around and saw a shadow movement right here in this little area where we heard the first noise come from. So we saw that shadow move and Jason ran over saying, Dave, you know, cut it out, we know it's you, you know, and. <laughs> that was weird, man. That was weird. Just moments before. And he was literally here. Hold this, I wanna show you his body expression as to how sure Jason was. This is what I saw. So he made that noise, Jason looked, he immediately went over here and his body language like, I'm sorry. His body language back in this alcove today, he was literally like, you know, like just, just, just trying to, you know, say, cut it out. We know it's you, you know, on yeah. and on and on. And he was literally so sure that he saw someone back in here that he was physically just like lunging back in there. We both saw it. It was like a shadow, and this is what it was. When that noise happened, that loud bang, it looked like someone went like this. That's weird. Like that. That's really weird. That's crazy. So. But no, I mean, because we haven't even gotten started tonight, I just wanted to, you know, 
Yeah, it was it was dark back in this corner, but what we saw was darker than the dark. Because the one I saw a few years back was in front of the double doors of the gym. Yeah, that experience was pretty uh, pretty life changing. That was not the first time I had seen a uh, full three dimensional shadow figure, but it was the first time I had seen one as close to pretty much as you and I are standing right now. And uh, I, I didn't feel anything like it was curious. It was you know happy. Anything. It was straight up. This is my area. You basically, get out of it. Now, one thing about the Sanford School is that Steve has his paranormal museum, the archive of the afterlife here. That's right. And he has some chilling haunted relics, oddities, historical items behind these two doors right here. So let's go check it out. This is uh, the first room here. Man, so. <laughs> you got some creepy dolls in here. Yeah, but we have some newer ones from England and Norway, somewhere in here. It's kind of interesting because I mean, you have some pretty historical items, some things that include the execution cap to an electric chair. Right. You have a serial killer's Bible. That's right. You have uh, different items that were used in rituals whether they be religious or even a cult. Right. Kind of a sucker for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> and you take all this stuff and you put it in to a school that is already considered to be haunted. Correct. And this... It's this Kind of like a battery. Yeah. These, these two rooms are just active. There's been some previous groups in here have had some really strange uh, experiences. Um, not that some of the items I have aren't of that type of energy, malevolent slash demonic, um, but people have been having a hard time with dealing with it. Um, one team in, uh, in particular was just here a few days ago and their batteries were just drain, 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 one, and one set after another. Uh, another lady during uh, the daytime um, she she left. She felt sick. And in most cases, from my studies with uh, spiritual warfare and demonology, demons know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. They know every worry, every care, um, every flaw or whatever that you have, and they'll use that against you. So it's like they're all contained right. within these two rooms. Right. They're not traveling around, so you come in here and you're kind of locked in here with all of these entities? Pretty much. We've had people even in on our, uh, our, during our daytime hours will actually leave early because they'll just get nauseous. They'll leave. You know, they'll wait out in the hallway for their other, for their friends or family to get done. Yeah. So. I think definitely we need to focus some of the investigation on your museum rooms because yeah. there's a lot of activity, not just with this school, with these two rooms. There's a lot of activity with these relics that you have here. All right, so we are getting ready to set up for abandonment, and we are going to leave the building, of course. This is what we do every time we investigate. Set up the equipment, leave for a little while, see what happens while we're gone. This right here is a little bit of a newer piece of equipment that we've not used on an investigation for PQ yet. It is a 360 periscope made by Paranologies, and these are going to light up directionally, depending on where the actual static is coming from. So. Turn that on. We'll put it right here so you all can see it. And hopefully, what we'll do is put this skull right back here. That way, if you see a uh, light on the skull, you know that, that is what that is. That it's the periscope lighting up. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Cool. That thing is moving. Oh, there it goes. Tracing something to the back. Let's just let it do its Let's thing. Let it oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to turn. That's pretty cool. 
Goodbye. Yes, the first time I've seen it do something that makes it close. So, setting up for a band up in here, you got these flashing lights down there. Those are the cat balls. They're like just little round balls. Anytime they move, they flash the lights. Are you running on the radio or about? About to be running. Back in the hallway, you're out of the school again at this time. Bam. This is filming an episode. This sideways across the hallway. A little bit. I don't know that would be fun. It might cause some chaos. Yeah. Oh, look, the ball. The ball. Whoa. Gotcha. Yep. Did you do that again for us, please? Did you roll that little ball there? It's just a toy for you. That is nuts, man. See that fast? That's why we set this hallway. Yep, this is the hallway where s <laughs> always happens. <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> happens in here. Can you make that thing flash again like you just did a moment ago? Yeah, we might have, we might have scared you by calling it out. So you guys, we're going to leave all this stuff set up in here for you to play with or whatever you want to do. And we're going to leave and leave you in here uh, to do whatever you want. So, all of these toys and stuff, these are yours to play with. You know, I just thought about this bench, I can blow off the with that. You guys want on there? Yeah, let's just put it against the wall. Just make it look normal, man. Yeah. I'll show sure you what my stuff was, it looks good. All right, Ryan, so what is the plan here? Okay, so we are up here on the second floor while Jason and Steve are downstairs on the first floor. We are going to be out in the hallway seeing what we can capture to begin with and we'll see where the activity guides us. Maybe it'll guide us back here to Steve's museum, maybe it'll take us someplace else, but we're gonna have the REM pod, uh, digital voice recorder, and of course the portal, pe the, uh, the pedal box, which is gonna be run through a PSB7 spirit box. So it's basically just a PSB7 spirit box. This actually uses a noise gate, analog delay, and reverb to cancel out the white noise so that we will only hear the voices coming through. It's just a way to filter out the spirit box so it's a little bit easier to hear the voices. So, And we'll see what we can communicate with. Let's head out here on the hall. Lights out. These little plastic balls that you see that Jason's putting down are activated by movement. If they are moved, they will light up. This entire floor level of the school is solid concrete. 
There was no basement underneath of us. So there's really no reason by us moving around that these walls will move. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, the, the vault wall. Whoa. Gotcha. Yep. Did you do that in for please? Did you roll that little ball there? It's just a toy for you. Okay. That was that, right in the middle of the hallway. That was a very weird voice. That kind of gave me chills a little bit, man. Who was that who just spoke to us? Can you tell us your name? Or why you're here? For the residential case where we used this, we had a couple people comment and say, well, why, can't, why aren't you reacting to what they're saying? It's, it's difficult in the moment to hear and understand what they're saying. Yeah, because when you get a chance to get home and replay the clip over and over and over, yeah. then you can start to formulate. That's why we use this. Yes. Let's take a walk down around this corner. Say stop. Say stop. You want to stop right here? <laughs> Whoa! Holy f man! Is that Miss Sanford? That's exactly what I thought. Miss Alice Sanford, is that you? That was clear. That was. Man, and like Steve was saying, right about here is where the old original part of the school ends. Yeah. So back when Miss Sanford would have been here, this would have been the end of the school. Maybe that's why she's telling us to stop. Maybe. Do you want us to stop right here, Miss Sanford? That was the same voice. Yeah. We apologize that we're surprised to hear you talk to us, but... Roll down here real quick. Not sure what that sound was. Hello.
that light you see flashing is from the uh, EM pump on the 360. Or Jason would definitely let us know if the uh, plastic balls were moving. Do you have a message you want to tell us? What's your name? That sounds kind of like it was on the floor. So that one sound sounded like it was on the floor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like grit. <laughs> yeah, how it makes that sound. Yeah. yeah. We say we switch over to a different function on the 360. Yeah. Periscope. Yeah, let's just do the periscope. Did anybody die here? It was. We gotta listen to that back later and see if it's a name. Miss Sanford was the first principal of what was originally the Third Street School. Uh, the school was rededicated in her name, uh, basically, the Sanford, uh, the Sanford School. Can you say the name of this building? picked it up. There we go. Thank you very much. I'm just going to move this way away from you. Give you some space. Can you do that again? Can you make the lights come over towards us? So we know that you're here. See if the energy moves back and forth. Yeah. It feels just crowded, if that makes sense. His room here, which you see has all these artifacts, caskets, bed from Eloise Psychiatric Hospital, wicker cooling casket. Ah! Oh. I swear, I swear that was not me. I'm clear here. Holy hell. I had a feeling about you, that, man. I yeah. Had a feeling. 
And I told you I got cold chill. Are you crossing in between the rooms? Look at this. But it's strange, you know, what's weird. It means, it means you have some sort of intuition, you know? You had the intuition to move that REM pod down here yeah. in between the two rooms. You gotta go with your gut, man. You have to go with your gut. That is really, really weird. And it went off once, and now it stopped. Again? Buddy Jason and I, here in the Pioneer Gymnasium at the Sanford School. Can anyone go up on the stage or sit on the side of the stage? Move something? Maybe talk with us a little bit? What's your name? This is the other museum room, so you can see it's in direct path between the two rooms. No, it wasn't. It must be like a weird egg over here. All right, so whatever or whoever is here with Steve in his museum, if you travel back and forth between the rooms, I have a feeling that you do, and you kind of proved me right there. That device went off, and that's okay. That's what we wanted to happen. We're going to go all the way back down here and give you your space so you can go back and forth. You want to we want you to make that go off. You want to set up that ball? Oh, yeah. And I have another recorder. Um, so we got these little balls that light up like that, and when they move, they're yeah motion activated. If they even move, even slightly, if they move slightly, they'll flash like that. That's very easy to tell when it goes off. But it's not like these floors are, are, are going to make it move because, you know, these floors are solid concrete. They are. Something gets quiet like this it makes you wonder if it's something that's building up or if there is no more ground. Yeah. Almost just like it could go either way. And it's making his mind up. Yeah. Oh, there goes the ball. I just caught it. Are you moving that ball down there? That is wild. I told you there's something down there. Yeah. I caught that on camera too. We're nowhere near it. No. Nothing. I stomped pretty hard there. Is there anything in Steve's museum that is considered to be dangerous? If there's something dangerous, can you set off one of those devices? Move the ball or set off the REM pod?
Are you the same shadow, the same figure that my friend Jason here saw in the back hallway? It's getting colder. You feel cold? On the back of my neck. Yeah. I'm pretty sure what I had said was wicker cooling casket right as soon as the REM pod went off. Wicker cooling casket. Ah! Ooh. I swear, I swear that was not me. I'm clear right here. Who was it who just set off that REM pod not long ago? That thing sitting on the floor, who was it that set that off? Can you do something else to let us know that you're here? Can you make that ball light up? All you have to do is touch it. You know what's weird? Hmm. It was like a curiosity. Like, after I set each one of those down, it went off. Mm -hmm. And that after that, it was done. It was like, oh, what does this do? Once they found out what it did, they're not interested anymore. And what is your intent? Outside that door. That's why I heard it, the direction I heard it from. Yeah, I definitely call it because I can hear it very clear. On my head's moving. It's like static in my on top of my head. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's trying to build itself up now because I'm getting chills. Like I'm getting a cold, staticky vibe. We feel you. We feel your energy. Yeah, I'm like that. My hair is standing on end right now. Oh, wow. I wonder, wonder about the other museum room. We can try it. There's a little bit of a vibe in here. Is there? What is that on? That right there, I put this on the table right in front of a Bible that was once owned by American serial killer Eileen Warnos. So this is one of Steve's newest items. And we're gonna see if there's any activity with it. 
Yep. So just to test to show you guys, that's you know it, it's acting almost like a geophone right now. Pretty much. <laughs> Eileen, is that you? That wasn't me. Eileen, if that's you, knock that roll that ball right off there. Just to get here early, like, me, like earlier this year, did not like this room. Really? No. I think I, th I kind of think we should corner ourselves in here. Put ourselves in the corner? Yeah. I thought I just heard something. Did you? Yeah. It's just chairs stacked over there. What do you say if we get over in this way and we just put stuff up over here? I definitely want to put something in the doorway. So I put this up. Let's close this door. Can anyone move like one of these little plastic balls? There's one over there on the floor that I'm pointing at, and one up on the table over there. Can you move one of those? What about Annie? Annie, I know you have a strong connection with Steve. Can you go over and see Annie? Annie, do you love Steve? This way. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Thank you, Annie. That's awesome. Now move it a little bit. Definitely not. But that was awesome, Annie. Steve will get your message. Can you do it one more time? Oh, <laughs> holy sh That is awesome. That's awesome. Apologize for the language there, Annie, but that's pretty cool. On command, you did it again. Thank you. Also in the middle of the floor, there's a uh, black device with a little blue light. It will not hurt you. There's a good chance it'll let us know that you're here. So if you want us to know that you're here, if you want to give us a sign, you can move one of those two little plastic balls or reach out and touch or stand close to that device with a little blue light. Whoa. What? I just saw a light anomaly. Where? Right to the left of Annie's case. But it just went off. Did it seem like it got darker in here? I don't know. I'm staring at the screen. I don't know what just happened. What do you mean it went off? Seemed like it was brighter in here just a second ago. Okay, something's messing with us. 
Are you Annie? Or are you something else? Or someone else? Oh, so you're somebody else. Roll the ball, please. Okay. One more time if it's you, Annie. One more time. Just a document again. Jason went to use the restroom. I'm pretty sure he's wrong on the quarter. Hopefully. Not sure where he put the recorder. Can anyone move like one of these little plastic balls? There's one over there on the floor that I'm pointing at, and one up on the table over there. Can you move one of those? Sleepy. <laughs> Guess you don't. Yeah. Oh god. Sorry. Must be the guys. We had a few things happen up there. We think we may have made communication with Annie. Oh, nice. Uh, with kind of like a special message to you. Annie, do you love Steve? <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Thank you, Annie. That's awesome. Now move it a little bit. If she could let you know that she watched over the museum make the ball go off and then it started going off. The ball did? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No Before. kidding. Yeah. It did on command and then and then Dave said, Annie, if that was you, can you do it again? And the ball went off again. Can you do it one more time? Oh, <laughs> holy sh That is awesome. Again. Like immediately. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. What are we 
we get a quiet time? 360. 360 going off? Yeah. Oh, yep, there it goes. Alright guys, so this is pretty much going to be the end of the episode. Um, it's a pretty active night tonight. Uh, we got some new equipment that Jason was kind enough to pick up for us, and I think that worked out pretty much in our favor uh, for this evening. What do you think? Absolutely, I agree. Hey, you can't beat it, it's a dollar. <laughs> Just a dollar. Just one dollar. But the building, again, didn't disappoint tonight. You know, we came in and we allowed ourselves to be guided through the place. By the activity, and I think in the end, we left with some pretty interesting results. Yeah, even up until the point that we've had to film this three different times because we've been hearing uh, things off in the background as we're trying to film it. Um, so with that, make sure that you come and check out the Sanford Center here and uh, book an investigation because it does not disappoint. Yeah, absolutely. And while you're here, you can visit the archive of the app product placement. You can visit the Archive of the Afterlife. A paranormal museum. A paranormal museum. Exactly. And see some of the cool artifacts that we saw, that we showed in tonight's episode. Yes. So thank you guys, as always, for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you are reminded every time we upload something new like this episode. And we will catch you in the next one.